This is Dr. Jörn Richstein, German Institute of Economic Research, Climate Policy Department. Dr. Richstein, Germany used to be the pioneer in the field of climate protection. What is the situation today? So, well, thanks uh, for the question. Um, I think that on the one hand, we have made great progress. We have increased the share of renewables in our energy system to, in the last year, 33% for electricity production. We have made uh, improvements in our energy efficiency um, in both the, the transport sector as well as the building sector. However, we still have a long way uh, to go. Our original goal for the 2020 was to reduce our emissions by 40% as compared to uh, 1990. And in the last year, we were only at 27%. So it seems like we are going to miss our emission goals for, for 2020. And our emission goals for 2030 are even more ambitious. So in order to reach them, we need to improve in a lot of different areas. We need to further increase our renewable shares we need to uh, get better at um, reducing emissions also in the transport sector, potentially by uh, electric cars or more efficient motors. We need to start reducing emissions in the industrial sector, not only by slow efficiency improvements, but by real breakthroughs in uh, emission reductions. Um, and uh, all that, I would say, needs to start happening now. And in that case, we can actually go back uh, and be a leader in uh, climate protection. Everybody is talking about the withdrawal from nuclear electricity. Doesn't this inevitably lead back to fossil fuels or other renewable energy sources able to compensate this loss? So I would say that renewable energy sources are definitely able uh, to compensate the reduction of, uh, of production from uh, nuclear electricity. So simply looking at the past, what we've seen is that uh, after Fukushima, we immediately shut down some nuclear capacities, right? So if we compare the situation just between 2010 and 2012, so just before Fukushima, and then after the shutdown of the first nuclear power plants, only a quarter of the, let's say, missed electricity production uh, of nuclear was actually replaced by fossil fuels, by lignite or brown coal production. The rest of it was actually replaced immediately within two years by uh, new production from photovoltaic, new production from wind energy, from biomass, and also by uh, a reduction in energy demand. And now if we shift to 2017, the last year, actually the phase out or the phase out so far of nuclear has not le uh, led to any increase of fossil fuel uh, consumption. Instead, all has been replaced by uh, new installations of renewables like wind, solar, uh, biomass. So if we are looking forward, uh, scenarios from my colleagues actually show that by 2030, we cannot only replace all the nuclear capacities, but also start phasing out coal, phasing out lignite, brown coal, and also uh, production of electricity from hard coal. So what we need for that is um, because all these sources are producing rather continuously, we need the rest of the energy system to get more flexible. So we need more storage, batteries, uh, we need more um, flexible energy demand. So for example, demand flexibility uh, in industry, and we also need new networks to work more closely together with our neighbors. So in the hours where we maybe don't have wind or we don't have solar, our neighbors uh, have uh, renewable energy production because the weather is always a bit different uh, in, in our neighboring countries.